Hi everyone, KJ here. And as some of you know, I've been dealing with a couple of kidney diseases and lots of medication over the last seven or so months. It's something that's felt like it has lasted forever. I haven't been able to eat anything with added salt, play basketball, or even work as much as I used to. I went from a very active lifestyle of either running, lifting, or playing basketball pretty much every day to having joint pain that makes it hard for me to walk for prolonged periods of times at certain point. I went from continually documenting my life on Instagram and YouTube to dreading the idea of my audience seeing my body in this state. I know that even at 23, others have it worse than me, but I also understand that the situation that I'm in does suck. I was honestly initially reluctant to make a video like this, but having the positive support from my viewers and the DMs on Instagram expressing how they loved how I shared my story, I knew that a video like this would be worthwhile. We could all use a bit more positivity in our lives and if you know how to frame even the worst of times into positive situations then you're going to be much more equipped to make the most out of your life in general. In this video I'm going to update you all about what has happened to me health wise then I'm going to share how I stayed positive through it all and lastly I'll quickly touch on my current status and health updates moving forward. If that all sounds interesting to you then I hope you enjoy the video. Make sure to comment down below any stories that you have or how this video helped you out. Huge shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring a portion of this video and let's get right into it. Back in March, two days after I moved from Palo Alto to Philly, I went to the emergency room because both my feet were swelling. Two weeks of hospitalizations, a kidney biopsy, and every test under the sun later, I was diagnosed with IgA nephropathy and minimal change disease, which led to me gaining 70 pounds of water weight in a matter of weeks along with the things like high blood pressure and high cholesterol. To this day, I've been waning off of the 80 milligrams a day prednisone that I was prescribed upon leaving the hospital the second time, and I've since been recovering while dealing with the side effects of the prednisone and all the other pills I have to take on daily. This is where some of my restrictions come in. I can't play basketball because my bones are more susceptible to being fractured because of the bone density of loss. I can't eat more than 2,000 milligrams of salt a day in order to prevent any more water retention. And I can't be in too stressful of situations because I cannot spike my already high blood pressure. Along with the restrictions, I get daily side effects like nausea, upset stomach, mood swings, and joint pain. These definitely hinder my day to day, but they definitely haven't affected me as negatively as the increase in water retention. As the prednisone kicked in a couple of weeks after being discharged from the hospital, I began to notice that my face and abdomen area began to get larger again. I've read about the moon face side effects and knew that since I was taking such high dosages that I was surely to experience it. The longer I was on prednisone, the larger my whole body looked and the more self-conscious I felt. I'm including a lot of my workout videos in here to not only show you the type of active lifestyle I was used to living, but also give you all a comparison to how quickly these diseases changed my body. The now 50 pounds of added water weight has made things like going up the stairs on Endeavor and has given a lot of people online the ammo to fire at me in any videos that I end up posting where I show my face. The comments seem to all come at such perfect times to kick me down. Just as I would feel comfortable posting on YouTube or Instagram, it seemed like there were people waiting on the other side, just ready to comment. I'd be lying if I said that these comments didn't really take a hit to my self-esteem. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared, or if I said that I didn't Google my symptoms every time I felt terrible to just make sure I wasn't dying. I'd be lying if I said that I still wasn't sometimes repulsed by what I see in the mirror every day. But I'd also be lying if I said that I'm not grateful for the life that I have because I most definitely am. Now that I've given you the backdrop of what's been going on, I wanna share how I've stayed positive and give you some updates about my health moving forward. Before I got sick, I was someone who would work for most of the waking hours of the day. During my breaks, I would watch lectures, and before I sleep every night, I would continue to think about what else I could be doing to be even more efficient. But I was definitely living a lifestyle that was not sustainable, and I definitely burnt out. Obviously, now I cannot stress myself out that much, but I've made a concerning effort to shift the way I thought about life. I restructured the way I thought about things, and since I've gotten sick here in Philly, I've flown back to LA to see my family, some of my friends came to visit me here in Philly, and Michelle and I have also hosted some of the members of her family here on multiple occasions. I've put a high value on the time with my loved ones in the past, but now I understand that I need those interactions to keep pushing. I've always believed in the sacrifice now and reap the benefits later mentality, but I now understand that there's a limit to that sacrifice within different people. I felt like I could work indefinite hours, but that's just isn't the case. And I'm learning now that I must take moments to enjoy each given day. I know it sounds dark, but I know now more than ever that I need to live every day like it's my last. I need to make sure that at any point in time, I'm satisfied with the life that I've lived. On top of spending quality time with my loved ones, this means doing everything I can to get back to my normal as quickly as possible. 
without adding additional pressure on myself to defy my body's timeline. I continue to work out on a regular basis and I continue to stick to my strict salt restrictions. My restrictions are so heavy that it's almost always better to cook for myself. And luckily I have someone like Michelle with me who embarks on my saltless journey with me. Michelle and I have grown to really enjoy cooking with one another, but before HelloFresh, we'd have to put in a good amount of time and effort to not only plan out our meals for the week, but also source all of the right ingredients. A lot of the times I either just don't have the time to plan things out or we end up buying ingredients that we only needed for that one meal. I have a very busy schedule, so HelloFresh is definitely my go-to mealtime solution. HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick meal options like 20 minute dinners or even oven ready pizzas. They offer so many different recipes each week that there's always going to be something very tasty. HelloFresh cuts out the stresses of meal planning and prepping so you can just enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. A lot of the times we can put out our favorite show and before the show is even over, we've made dinner, which has been great. What I really love is that their ingredients are pre-portioned, which ultimately means less prep for you and less wasted food. HelloFresh has quickly become a regular part of Michelle and my dinner routine, and I can highly recommend them to all of you. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code KJHardrick14 to get 14 free meals, plus free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code KJHardrick14 to get 14 free meals, plus free shipping. Something that has helped me continue to stay positive is reducing the pressure that I put on myself with everything that I do. Before I got sick, I would work multiple jobs, complete my coursework, start side projects, and manage this YouTube channel all by myself. I would take all of this on myself because I thought I could simply do it all. I was impatient to be successful. Since then, I expanded my YouTube team to include editors and graphics design personnel. I became a lot more honest with my colleagues when I have those days where I just feel terrible. I don't impose any strict schedule on myself and allow myself to set realistic goals and go at my own pace. Once my doctors helped me realize that I had no control over the weight loss while I'm on prednisone, I stopped putting pressure on myself to lose weight as well, especially because I know I will be able to do it fairly quickly when I do get better. I developed a new frame of mind around what I believe to be success. I used to think success meant being the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company or retiring in my 20s. And although those are still goals of mine, I don't view those as the things that will make me successful. I now truly believe that success is when you feel fully content with your life. When you get to enjoy every day to its fullest without worrying about that next thing, that's when you've reached success in my head. And honestly, I feel as if I've already been successful. This doesn't mean that I won't continue to pursue loftier goals, but it does mean that I don't need to achieve anything else for me to feel content in everything that I've done so far. I'm at the point where I'm going with the flow with life. Wherever life takes me, I just view it as more life to live. Right now, I'm working on really awesome startups while I continue to share my journey with the world, and I simply couldn't ask for more. This new frame of mind that I've developed while recovering has helped me see the positives out of pretty much every situation. I've now become almost grateful for becoming ill because my sickness opened my eyes to the things that are truly valuable in my life. I realize a lot of the things that I'm expressing in this video and best of all, I learned to cut myself some slack because I can't do it all. I also became more content with my situation when I realized that my physical appearance is just that, my physical appearance. My loved ones still love me, my colleagues still respect me, and I'm still on this earth living life to its fullest. I know that there are young people out there who have it even worse than me, and I've grown to be very grateful for my life. I haven't lost any of my senses or any of my limbs or muscle functionality. I still have my brain, my voice, and my platform to share my journey, so I really just can't ask for anything more. Yes, I still hate the way that I look in the mirror, but that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate myself, that I'm not loved by others, and that I'm still doing great. I'm still me, and the extra fluid is just extra fluid. This disassociation with my fluid, of what I actually refer to as my 50 pound water vest, has made it easier to accept that this is just a temporary hurdle that I need to get over. I do have days where I'm simply feeling terrible. There are days where it's really hard to get out of bed because of all the pain I'm feeling. But those days don't define who I am as a person and they won't have me be any less grateful for future days on this earth. Everybody has their challenges and understanding that will give you a better perspective of other people's lives. No matter how confident I have become, it still feels terrible being called fat while I'm struggling to wear a shirt that definitely fit earlier this year. No matter how positive I can flip a situation, I still dislike how fragile and sickly I've become. Just as I learned how to cut myself some slack on the workload that I put on myself, I also learned how to cut myself some slack on being positive all the time. I now let myself have a bit of negative thoughts because I know that only makes me human. 
but I know that I can quickly pick myself back up every day when I need to. Moving forward, my body should be shrinking back to normal over the next couple of months. I started on 80 milligrams of prednisone a day and I'm now down to just five milligrams of it every other day. And if my blood work tests come back good, then starting this Friday, I will finally be able to stop taking the 10 to 15 pills I have had to take every day. Soon I should be able to get most of my strength back and since I'm young, my bones and skin should be able to recover somewhat. This was a really tough journey and I've never had to fight so hard just to feel okay every day. But I won't let this situation define my outlook on life. I'll continue to stay strong when I can and will continue to understand that it's okay to falter sometimes when I'm not. I hope you all appreciated this video because it was one that was pretty difficult to write about and make. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date with what I'm up to. And make sure to subscribe and have the notification bell click to stay up to date on all my latest videos. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.